Hi, this is Lucas, and uh, today we've got a Rockwell 11 inch lathe. This is a really good lathe, it's a very competent lathe. Uh, it's got a three phase motor, and uh, that can be uh, uh, you know, converted to 220 volt single phase with one of two methods, actually one of three methods, static phase converter, a uh, rotary phase converter, or a VFD. I would recommend the VFD. Uh, everything out of it is working real well. Uh, I'm going to fire it up here and just show the nice kind of uh, surface finish we get. Uh, we'll do that in a minute. I'm going to show you how uh, quiet this is uh, without the outboard gear train engaged. So let's start with that. Well, that's the lathe running without the uh, outboard gear train. Incorporate both. So here we got, uh, we can increase the speed. That's the system with the, uh, oh, let's take a look at the surface finish here now. That's uh, just like a mirror. So this is a carbide tool. Actually, this is not going to come with the uh, the lathe, but the tool post, it's a 100 series or a A cross A uh, style tool holder. It's a one, also called a 100. So uh, it's, a, it's just a Chinese tool post, but it, it works great. Uh, there's no problem with them. Uh, it's got a neat, uh, the, one, a couple of the features of the Rockwell 11, it's got the uh, incorporated thread, uh, thread chasing dial. And else it's kind of a, a nice system for it's threading. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's this, this lock right here. And what this allows you to do is set a position and then back this out and then return to that position each time. So what that allows you to do is use the compound for advancing the tool towards the thread and then use this to back it out and then return to that position each time. So that's a real nice feature of the Rockwell 11. That was something I, I think was quite a nice innovation that they came up with for threading. So uh, this one's got a newer, uh, in fact, brand new three jaw chuck and back plate. Uh, it's got the, uh, it'll have some accessories. Uh, it'll have the tool holders that go with the uh, 100 series. Uh, another cool feature of this lathe is this uh, operating lever, which allows you to set a loose spindle, a lock spindle, which is handy for uh, changing chucks, etc., and back gear without uh, having to go through two uh, systems where you would have to open up the. Uh, Factory cabinet's in good shape. Here's the uh, storage that you've got available. It's got the uh, original Delta motor, uh, which is just peeking out there. They said it's a three-phase three -phase motor. And it's got uh, this access panel, which you can get at everything. And here's the reeve drive. So the, here's the reeve drive system. I'll show how this... Uh, High speed. That's at uh, 1550 is what the the label on the uh, on the uh, speed control says. And that's a lower speed. That's down around probably oh, 300 RPM or so. Uh, and then direct drive in back gear that'll go down to about 45 RPM. Uh, this is the original factory uh, switch. And that's all working properly. Yeah, you actually have to hold it over this way momentarily to uh, engage the uh, magnetic starter. So it's a nice uh, nice system that way. It's got the uh, full uh, complement of uh, uh, speeds, feeds, and uh, uh, thread cutting uh, through the gearbox. And then uh, we'll uh, come back and we'll take a look at the outboard gear. Okay, here's the outboard gear train. Uh, it's uh, uh, just the straight cut gears as most of them are. It's uh, It was uh, in very good condition. There's no breaks or any condition issues with the uh, with the teeth on the gears. Uh, clean housing. Everything looks great on it. Fire it up again and let's uh, let's engage it. So it's going to be even a little louder this time because uh, the door is open. Oh, let's.
let's briefly talk about the tail stack. The tail stack is uh, unusual for this lathe in that it's got this uh, micrometer collar on it. So this is actually, uh, uh, it was a tool room lathe and uh, it had uh, had been specced for uh, the higher, uh, some of the higher quality uh, accessories. So it's got a nice Jacobs chuck in the tailstock. It's an MT3 uh, bore in the uh, tailstock and uh, everything looks good. There's a couple of little scars on this but uh, for the most part the bore feels real nice and uh, everything locks up real good when it's uh, driven home. Uh, that locks up very precisely and then there's also a lock here for the uh, for the quill. All right now uh, we're going to take the chuck off and uh, take a look at the spindle nose. So uh, there's a uh, hole for a pin spanner right here. This is the pin spanner. It's a number 461. There'll be a pin spanner with this lathe when it goes. Uh, we've got the handle in a lock position, lock the spindle, and just give a wrap on that and uh, spin it the chuck will uh, will come loose. Now, I recommend in particular that uh, if you're going to run this in reverse that you tighten this, the uh, backing plate and chuck assembly up uh, very securely with the spanner because the uh, the chuck uh, will be under some uh, unwinding force, if you will, when, this, uh, when the uh, motor is put in reverse. So this should be tightened up securely with this wrench before uh, you uh, begin using the chuck. All right, we'll be back in a minute. We'll take this off and we'll take a look at the spring. All right, so we've got the lathe in back gear and uh, the, uh, we're just taking a look at the run out on the uh, spindle socket. And uh, it's actually, as expected, tremendously good. This is uh, kind of needle deflection we're getting. So what, about uh, half a thousandths or something. Oh, excellent. Just quickly a close-up of the uh, threads on the uh, spindle nose. And uh, they are indeed uh, in great shape. There's hardly any uh, evidence of uh, any problems with this. In fact, there's no evidence. Uh, they, look, uh, they look pristine. They look great. So other areas of the lathe that are important, uh, the bedways. The bedways are in great shape. I should point out there is one ding on the bedways. Uh, it's uh, it's here. It's really not an issue. It's been uh, stone flat. It was done probably a long time ago. If you consider the uh, entire area under the saddle uh, averages out any kind of uh, issues like this in any case. This is really immaterial to the accuracy of the lathe. Other than that, these ways are really good. They're uh, almost without any uh, dings or gouges. So they look great. Uh, the lead screw is phenomenal. There's just no problems with the lead screw whatsoever. It looks fantastic. So lead screw bedways and uh, spindle all in great shape. Just a quick uh, bit of information here. So again, this handle is in, uh, a very, very helpful thing. Going from direct drive to back gear. Just that easy. Then going from back gear to direct drive. Again, just that easy. Okay, what we've got here is a 3 inch ground rod. It's a uh, Chicago Latrobe. Uh, this one, uh, the reason I'm using a 3 8 is the next uh, tool we're going to use is a uh, concentricity indicator, centering indicator, and it's got a 3 8 inch shaft on it. We're about two and a half, three, maybe three and a half inches from the uh, uh, from the chuck, uh, and we got about two thousandths uh, run out. Uh, so that's actually quite good for a three jaw chuck. We're going to leave it at that, and uh, we're going to check the uh, alignment then with the uh, tail stack momentarily. Okay, so I just want to show this uh, tail stack is very well lined up. Uh, we've got the uh, centering indicator here, and uh, we're running the probe inside the socket, and we're getting, oh, I don't know, maybe a thousandth deflection. Now let's just uh, shut that off so uh, we can take a look at up and down. I'm gonna so right here we're, we're down, and uh, we're at about uh, zero, and if we spin this to the up position, 
or right on. So that means that the, uh, uh, the there's no shimming or scraping or anything required between the base of the tailstock and the upper section. Uh, that's great. And then the uh, front and back alignment, so uh, you know, going uh, this way, is uh, actually controlled by by these screws. They're called the sit-over screws, and those are. Uh, uh, easily adjustable and uh, in fact I just did that but uh, just to show how uh, good that is uh, here we're at about zero again on our clock uh, or indicator I should say and uh, again about zero so total deflection uh, total uh, misalignment looks to be around maybe a thousandth between the uh, the tail stack socket and the uh, center line of the of the chuck. very good the uh, lathe performance is uh, Excellent as uh, demonstrated by the cut that we took earlier with the carbide tool which gave us really essentially a, a mirror finish and a very nice very nice chips I should point out here's a, one of the chips that came off of that cut uh, they're very uniform uh, large and uh, uh, extremely uh, uh, good geometry on them anyway everything looks great